In this video, I'll show you 15 different ways you can configure your operator call flow in your Microsoft Teams phone system. And it depends on which scenario you have, whether you have a receptionist or just a common area phone or no physical phone at all. And most importantly, we'll cover what happens to those missed calls. Welcome to the channel. My name is Bogdan Schperny, founder of Apex One IT, and we do comprehensive small business IT, including modern phone systems that I'm going to show you here today. But before we get started with the receptionist kind of operator call flow, there's a couple things you should know. So if you look at the screen here, you should know already some things about auto tenants and call queues. That's what we'll be using to describe all the different options here that are available. I won't be going into great detail of how to set up a call queues, auto tenants in the Teams Admin Center. I have other videos on that, but this is just to show you what's possible. And if you keep watching all the way through, you'll see different scenarios that you can actually deploy, or of course you can reach out and we can get this done for you. And two, before we get started, is that ideally you already have like your basic call flow setup, meaning when someone calls into your business phone or calls your business, you already have something like press one for sales, press two for billing, three, four new jobs, something like that, okay? This is just for the operator or receptionist and kind of ways to handle voicemail in general. And the reason why I'm making this video is that you might know that Microsoft Teams phone is surrounded around kind of personal users as opposed to, you know, a different phone systems really about the desk phone themselves, the physical phones. So it works great in that scenario, but when, you know, you're trying to make this common area phone it's a little more difficult to work with. That's why we have auto tenants and call queues. But from one of these options here, I'm sure you'll find something that works in your business use case. Now these 15 options I'll lay out for you, I kind of break them down into six different categories as you see here. So first we have the option of there's no receptionist, there's no kind of front desk scenario. And there's three options within this. So option one is you have no operator at all. And really that's what Microsoft Teams phone is made for meaning that you have such a good call flow before this that when someone calls, they just get to the exact person that they need. Okay, so that's really one scenario is that you have no operator and that works totally fine. Someone going off of kind of a traditional legacy phone system, this might be hard to imagine, but you'll, you'll notice the more people I work with, they end up going with no operator or at least no physical desk phone. Option two is that this goes to just a voicemail. So if someone calls your business and they can't make a decision on who they're trying to reach, you know, they can't, you know, click on number three for a new job or anything like that. They don't know what to do. You know, they still want that operator. Well, the option for them is to go to a voicemail. So you set up a auto tenant that's really just a kind of receptionist voicemail. And for this option two, what we have here is it really just redirects. You kind of have to do it this way. It redirects to a Microsoft 365 group and you can just call that group receptionist. And from there you get a voicemail. And this small text here, this is just to show you kind of the different options of what happens with the voicemail. So everyone that's a part of this group will receive a audio file in their email and also a transcription. And optionally, kind of depends on the group settings they have set up. But if this email is also forwarded to individual users of that group, like employees, they can also see this within their Teams app. So if they go to Teams app, that calls tab, they'll see this in their voicemails as well. And everybody will see it in their own voicemails. Okay, so that's kind of the optional part here for the voicemail. Now with option three, it's very similar. So again, you have an auto tenant kind of voicemail, you can call again, whatever you want, but instead of a group, it's a team, right? So it's kind of a different definition in Microsoft 365. So you select a team that you have, it might be just your whole entire company if you want to do that, or you have a reception team, something like that, sales team. So option one here for voicemail shows you that you will receive the same kind of email each person in that team same email, you know, with the MP3 file, the transcription, who called, right? But also they can now view this voicemail in under the Teams kind of tab, not in their personal Teams app calls, all right? And let me just show you how to do that. So for example, I'm here not under calls, which would be my kind of personal calls received, but under Teams. And then whichever team you had selected here, you just select that team. You might have different channels. Here I just have general channel, for example. So click on general. And if you reset this up, you'll have a new tab called calls. So all calls, you know, incoming, outgoing, right? All your missed calls, things like that. And also you'll see here voicemail. So that's where your voicemails go. There we go. Here's this call that actually has a transcription. 
you can see it, you can play it back. So that's how you can access a team voicemail. And three, if you set it up so that the team's emails also are forwarded to your personal email or your employee email, then here in option three, the voicemail can also go into your personal calls, which would look something like this, where kind of same like option one, where you go to calls and then you click to voicemails and you'll see all that here as well. And next, let's look at if you actually have someone who's a dedicated receptionist. Okay, and this is kind of one receptionist and then we'll look at two receptionists in the next chapter. Option four, so let's say someone doesn't make a selection, they hit the operator zero, depends how you define it, and you have this specific receptionist and it's Pam, okay? Pam Beasley, <laughs> if you know who I'm talking about. All right, so what happens here is she either answers the phone, and this can be either her like smartphone, the Teams app on there on her PC or Mac, the Teams app on the computer she answers, or a physical desk phone where she's signed in, okay? Like a Teams phone. So all of these, until we get kind of to the bottom, I'll show you scenarios with common phones, but this is whoever is shown here, they're signed into a physical phone or they're just using their computer. So she gets a call, she can answer if she misses it. That's what these dotted lines indicate. It goes to voicemail. So in this option four scenario, it goes to her personal voicemail. And you know, she gets a personal email and she can see her own calls and missed calls, right? And voicemails. Option four, kind of traditional in a way, but you're really logged down to this specific employee. Now, option five is very similar, but now the voicemails, they don't go to if Pam, you know, your receptionist can't pick this up, it doesn't go, the voicemail doesn't go to her specifically, but it goes to a distributed list, so a shared voicemail. Distribution list is just an email that email goes out to several people and that can include or probably should your receptionist Pam in this example. What's happening here though is that you set up a call queue to make this happen. You can set up how long, you know, this rings for. This says that it rings for 15 seconds, which means Pam has that much, you know, 15 seconds to answer. Otherwise, there's a couple of different options here. This is part of call cues, but otherwise basically it goes to the shared voicemail and it works very similar. In this case, different individuals, so this is now a group, not a team, but different individuals receive that email with the audio file transcription and also in their own calls tab in the Teams app, okay, in the Teams application. Okay, so this option five, I would say in general is better than four if you can do so. Um, even if you have only one receptionist, it just helps others see it in case, you know, maybe Pam is six, something like that. Now, option six is kind of a next level. So it includes a backup. So let's say, you know, you have still a receptionist call queue, could be a front desk, something like that. Let's say she doesn't answer the phone in time. What's going to happen first is it goes to this kind of additional call queue. So you can make it, you know, I put here an, as an example, a sales call queue maybe, for example, depends on your business, what it's doing. But let's say you have a sales call queue. So if Pam doesn't answer, it goes to a sales call queue. Now, if she was just out of office that day, it'll just end this voicemail here will be kind of the same thing, the email transcription for her, or you can change this also to another group kind of voicemail. If you already learned something new, please go ahead and like, subscribe, and let's go see the options with two or more receptionists. For option seven, let's say you have something like a front desk, hospitality, it could be receptionist call queue as well. So that's what we have here, a call queue. Again, someone doesn't make a selection or this is specifically set up, you know, to go to the front desk, like you have press zero for the front desk. So now we have a, a group defined that we call here call queue for front desk. Okay, and now we have Pam and we also have Aaron. And in this scenario we have, it just rings both of them at the same time. So maybe they're working at computers you know, they don't have physical desk phones, or they could, they both could have physical desk phones, but it rings both of them at the same time. This is just whoever picks up the phone first. And let's say neither of them pick up the phone or neither of them are working or something like that. It goes to this Microsoft 365 group, you know, a group that we've seen before, but now we just call it, you know, front desk. You give an email address to the group and that group email address will receive an email of this voicemail, of this missed call, you know, transcription, uh, audio file. And also optionally, again, as we've seen with previous ones, Pam and Aaron themselves in their personal inbox can also receive uh, this voicemail. So this will show up as an email for them or they can also go to, again to their Teams app calls and they'll see that missed call and they'll see that voicemail. Option eight here is very similar. So instead of a group and, you know, handling voicemails like this, what will happen here instead is you select or define a team and with a channel. So it can be your whole company team and then you have a channel for front desk 
or maybe you have a whole team that's front desk or something like that and then a general channel okay so in there you define which users belong in that and they can receive a phone call the same way but by put, putting a team and a call queue you enable you know you enable that calls tab i showed you earlier for this team and for this channel specifically so in that calls tab that's so you can retrieve the you know audio file the transcriptions also the you know email will go to that team and that channel uh, as i show here in number two and again optionally you can have all these forward specifically to the users as well now in option eight and seven you can have these you know when you define a group in here and you put a team and a call queue uh, you don't have my, many kind of uh, options on how who gets called you basically have to have them all called by one or maybe sequentially actually actually not sequentially you'll this is where you'll need option nine so in option nine let's say you have a receptionist call queue or again front desk here it's called serial routing and what happens is you can define you know who gets called first for example you can do like round robin also or maybe you know pam answered the call last time this time is going to be aaron something like that so they have you can define this again but minimum they have 15 seconds to answer the phone first it goes to pam she doesn't answer then it goes to aaron okay, she's kind of like a backup receptionist you can define a maximum wait time so let's say you know there's a one minute call timeout which means it'll, it'll keep bouncing around between these two because each of these are 15 seconds but you can have more receptions in here or lower the maximum wait time and once that time is up it'll go to this microsoft 365 group which we already discussed same kind of thing same kind of voicemail options we have option 10 now and this is for receptionist so you have a receptionist and also maybe you have a backup receptionist on site and i should mention that all the previous ones it kind of it doesn't really matter if they're on site or not maybe you have some kind of hybrid business scenario going on this still all works just fine now in option 10 we have an actual physical desk phone as well so we have our primary receptionist here let's say it's pam and she may or not, may not have a desk phone herself but in this scenario our receptionist our call queue here it will first try to reach pam for 15 seconds if she answers that's great if she doesn't it goes to a shared desk phone and we might want to have this set up if, for example, you know, maybe Pam doesn't go into the office all the time, or maybe she's even working from home, but she doesn't answer. And whoever's in the office, they can, or on site, they can answer that phone. Or someone filling in, you know, that day, if Pam is sick, something like that, they can also just very simply answer that phone. You'll hear it ring in the office. Okay, so this is if you want that kind of traditional phone and you want to hear it ring in the office. That's what that's for. Now, let's say no one can, you know, Pam doesn't answer, the shared desk phone doesn't get answered. We can define again a maximum wait time. And here we have the voicemail as for the user for Pam to go specifically. If that doesn't work, you know, in your kind of situation, again, that's where we have option 11. You can redefine this, make this go to a Microsoft 365 group. Again, it can be a reception group, front desk, call queue, something like that. And we already talked about how that works. And also what I want to show in this example is in the serial routing, you can have multiple users and they can be mixed. So we have a specific user, maybe our primary receptionist Pam here. Then we have that shared desk phone and maybe that doesn't get answered. And we can also have a whole nother Microsoft 365 group that's just kind of maybe backup receptionist. So if none of these answer, maybe we have like two more people in this receptionist call queue and they get called, you know, maybe their team's phone, maybe as a business owner, you put yourself in there or something like that and you're out on the road, but no one can answer this, you can still pick up the phone if you know if you want to be bothered that way. All right, we have three more options left here, and this is a rotating receptionist on site. So this is if you typically just have several receptionists that work in the office, this might be a good option for you. So option 12, something like a front desk, let's say you define a call queue, alert time, so maybe you have 45 seconds for each, maybe it depends you know, who's calling what type of business. Some people are able to handle longer wait times. But let's say you have sometimes Pam works, you know, maybe Monday, Wednesdays or something, and then you have Aaron, who's the receptionist. And an easy setup for that is that, you know, whoever signs in, maybe you have one computer there, whoever's on shift that day, if it's Pam, she's signed in, you can have that physical desk phone linked to that same user. So that physical desk phone will ring for Pam or it will ring for Aaron, whoever's actually signed in. Or, you know, this is kind of optional here as well. You don't have to have that physical phone, but this is kind of the point here of this option 12 is that you have a physical phone, but this way it's linked to a specific user, whoever is on shift. 
But with Microsoft 365, if Pam, Aaron, no one can answer the phone, you still have that kind of maximum wait time and you can have it go to a Microsoft 365 group that we talked about earlier in a, a lot of different ways to get voicemail that way. Okay, finally, the last kind of category here, shared desk phone only. So you don't want to deal with unique users at all. You really want to set up as just a common area phone. There's no specific user tied to it. You know, option 13 and 14 here. And this can work great in maybe a point of sale situation, coffee shop, something like that. So you have someone call in, you make this, you define this call queue, and it essentially just goes to this shared or common area phone. Anyone in the vicinity can pick up this phone and you define an alert time. If, if it's longer than that, then that's when it goes to voicemail. You can create a group that's a kind of point of sale voicemail group and you know whoever's responsible for this can receive that voicemail. Uh, and I won't go into the details here, but you can see the details here of what happens. You can have the voicemail appear on the physical phone itself. You can also set up so specific people receive an email with this voicemail. And then option 14 here is just a different way of receiving that voicemail. And just, that's just because of the limitations again, because of the way Microsoft works, how it's set up really for specific users. If you read the details here, you can see that it doesn't appear when you set up the voicemail to go to a group. It doesn't show up here as kind of a missed call or a voicemail on there that's kind of blinking at you. The way it would is if you set up the voicemail to go to that same shared desk phone, right? So when you make a shared desk phone, you have to define a user in Microsoft Teams. And if you make that same user the person who receives the voicemails, right? This is kind of like a personal voicemail, then kind of the phone will work properly. But the voicemail is really um, without some kind of workarounds the voicemail really belongs now on that shared device. And finally, I have option 15 here, which is just saying, you know, someone hits zero or whatever number you define, it reaches, it just goes directly to this user, which is a shared device or common area phone user. In this case, maybe a point of sale. Now, if someone answers, that's great. If not, it just directly goes to that kind of personal voicemail. It's just when you set this up without a call queue, there's just some limitations. That's why I highlight here in bold is that you can't adjust the greeting of the voicemail that easily. With call queue, you just have a lot more options there. You can, you can define it a lot better. You can record your own, you know, kind of MP3 audio file. Uh, all of these have text to speech though as well. So in, in this scenario here, you kind of have a more robotic uh, voice. And as I know here at the bottom, this will show up properly as a missed call on this shared device. Now you kind of seen 15 different options and you can see how you can kind of mix it up. Remember now, ideally, you know, option one is great. One of these two or three is a really good option because you really first want to think about just your main call flow, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video. If you set this up very well from the beginning, then you just don't need to think about all these various options so much. Unless you have a really kind of brick and mortar store, something like that, you know, that's where options like 12, 13, 14, 15 would really apply. Otherwise, really try to set up first a call flow that just works really well and gets you know whoever's calling to the right department or the right person. That way they can just handle that call immediately or handle that voicemail immediately. You know, it goes to the right person. There's no middleman to kind of deal with. This might all look a little bit complex, but you should know you can accomplish all of this and probably for cheaper than what you pay right now for your business phone system, all with the Microsoft Teams phone system. And that's because all of this can actually be done with just one business phone number. You can click on this video right here if you want to see a complete tutorial step-by-step -step on how to set up a Microsoft Teams phone with just one business phone number. Or if you want to set up a shared desk phone, common area phone, just like the ones that we went through today, like a physical phone, then click on this second video down here. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.